Hello and welcome to Souls Brettspiele Table Talk with Schwan and Niels. Today we are talking about Tomorrow, a game from Conquistador Games and Dirk Niemeyer. Yeah, uh, we have it on our table and we are ready to talk about it. A lot and, of stuff. <laughs> yeah, a lot of stuff. And always we are starting with the rules. This time it's my turn or? Go for it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Each turn starts with a new event. You have nine turns and that means nine event cards, which is separated into three different types of threat level. We're talking, we don't talk about that. So each time a turn starts with flipping around an event and the event affects the whole turn. Then the person who controls the cyberspace, which is usually the Chinese guy, who can decide steal one of these strategy cards from another player or take one or determine the turn order which could be interesting but usually he takes one of these cards or stealing one of these cards. The next step is and this is what all people playing together and making at the same time choosing one of their five actions putting them face down and then choosing another one and putting it on top. So every turn you have two actions and you should wisely choose which actions you want to uh, take and in which turn order because once you put in that into turn order you don't you are not allowed to change the order of these cards. So everybody is picking two actions putting that face down on the table and then if the controller of the cyberspace didn't uh, use the turn order then the European Union has a special ability which is this yellow guy here um, to choose the turn order only if the cyberspace controller doesn't take that. After that we have the resolve each action card phase so everybody in turn order is taking his first uh, card flipping it around taking the action then it goes around the table and then the second action. So you see you have only two actions each turn, only nine turns. After nine rounds the game is over and so now it sounds very easy and very uh, peasy. So what is the real nature of the game? And the nature of the game is more the theme of the game. The theme and the idea behind the game is as you can see the world is overpopulated which is basically true. So they are living too much uh, people on the earth and we can't survive. All of us has to reach the goal to depopulate the world by going this track down until we reach this goal here. If we don't take this goal and reach that goal we all lose together. Of course you are the leader of one of the great nations of America, European Union or China or whatever so and you are interested in depopulating the world to uh, win the game but of course not your own citizens so uh, as a leader of United States you don't care about Arabs I'm pretty sure uh, you have to protect your own citizens so how can you depopulate the other one and that's the real spicy thing in that game here so the most effective way of depopulating the world is by using biological warfare against other countries. So for an example if you use this card here and it goes on then for an example you can hit here northern India with a bad disease Plutoxin 7. So and you see you're killing people in that country and it spreads around maybe by rolling your dice don't go too deep into that rule so but this is the only way to depopulate the world so and you can see as a great leader of the United States you are interested in depopulating the world but definitely not your own citizens so you have other things to do is spionage for an example is to cancel this biological warfare or other things or even cancel a cancel action stealing the cyberspace is another thing military taking over one of these minor powers which are not able to play in the game like 
South America, which is just a minor power in the game. So easily you can come with your tanks and take over the land. And you can see, by the way, here, this little wooden tanks. So, and let's say during the game, someone is really pissing you off and making a lot of cutthroats against you and stepping back times and again and again and again against you. Then you maybe can hit the red button and launch a nuke and yeah, shoot them back into the middle age. And then you use this very unique and never see before uh, mushroom clouds to nuke these countries back into the middle age. Okay, that's it. Uh, I'm pretty sure you know exactly what five actions you can use over the course of the game and that's it. Okay, so that's the rules. Now let's discuss the component quality. I mean, I don't see anything about this game that is cheap. Everything is very high quality, I think is very high standard. I mean, the cards are thick enough, they're not flimsy, they don't bend. Uh, even the printing on the cards is, I think it's pretty clean, it's yeah. very simple to read and understand. Yeah. Um, Definitely. I love these. I mean, the tanks <laughs> and the mushroom clouds. Yeah. The mushroom clouds are, Those are really awesome. Yeah, I ne love these things. Never saw that before, definitely not. And it, it's funny to play around with these. <laughs> It sounds weird, I know exactly, yeah, but playing around with these mushroom clouds oh, yeah. in your hand and then placing that down on Berlin, that's... Yeah. Uh, Everybody's like this at the table when they're yeah. waiting for their move. It's kind of annoying, yeah. you hear the wood and then you're just telling them to play. Yeah, but it's a threatening <laughs> thing, right? Oh yeah, they love it. I mean, yeah. people love to hold these. Yeah. I mean, these pawns are great. I mean, I love the production quality of it. It looks, even when you have it set up on the table, it looks great. Yeah, there's definitely nothing you can improve. Um, this is high quality, high-end standard, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah, the quality is really awesome, never seen before. And what is with the mechanics? What, uh, what are your thoughts about the mechanics and the innovation of that game? Well, I think one of the huge advantages to this game is that there is no direct combat between the players. It's, you know, a lot of people I... Yeah, but it's, uh, if I nuke you, that's definitely a hit in your face. But what I mean is there's no, okay, I'm going to take my tanks and move into your country. I'm going to roll oh, some yeah. dice and, okay, you lose these guys. Yeah, and then, right. Yeah. That's gone. You don't do that at all in this game. Your main method of attack is launching biological weapons on whoever you choose. Yeah, but um, you have to understand us right, so... Uh, using biologic warfare is straight in your face. It's definitely against your opponent or maybe your friend or whatever. So it's straight in your fan, uh, face. Yeah, exactly. Another part I like in this game is that you have only five actions. It's very easy. Everybody can remember his five actions. It's so easy. And you choose two actions and you're bounded for this decision you made at the beginning of the round for one round and you have only yeah. nine rounds so it's very fast to play very easy it's streamlined so you have definitely two actions you can't do anything more there's no way to get more actions or blah 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 yeah. no it's choose two actions make the two actions it's so fast to play the game so you can easily play that game in 70 minutes with a full swing of six, six people if everybody is interested in yeah, it's not a long game. No, definitely not. I don't think there's anything built into this game that can stretch it out to make it a long game. It's pretty... The only thing is if you have a group uh, which is talking a lot and negotiating a okay, lot. Well, because uh, we have to say that the spice of this game is negotiation. You have to find friends around your tables and backstab them sometimes or cutthroat them sometimes or even have a friendship over the course of nine rounds that's also possible but finding and breaking alliances and coalitions that's what the game is all about or do what i do and try and play neutral the whole game oh yeah but that's, <laughs> as much as that's possible. boring that's boring you have to be in the game and that is yeah, acting your life. you want to <laughs> act like a leader of a nation not sitting around in the corner and doing nothing 
That's the reason why you are losing all the time. Nah, I didn't lose the last couple times I played. I was kind of sitting back and just biding my time and yeah, not making not anybody always. mad. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but another thing that I really love about this game is uh, when you're talking about the nukes. Each country has a set amount of nuclear weapons and it's designed in a way where there's a pretty heavy penalty for using them. So it's not like if you stab me in the back and I get mad and now I'm gonna go and launch all my nukes on your countries. No, because the idea of the game is the, the world is overcrowded and cannot sustain the population. Well, each time you use a nuke, you're actually destroying a piece of the world. So yeah, you're wasting country. Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's that much less inhabitable. So I mean, you don't want that. You, you need the land to sustain people. If you don't have land because of the nukes, well, then you're kind of working against yourself. That's the funny part. <laughs> Every time I teach the game, I say, okay, uh, using nukes is only if someone crossed your personal red line. So if someone pokes you so much that you're really pissed off, yeah. then hit the red button and yeah, bomb this off. guy back into the middle. Like, <laughs> okay, you know exactly I can't win the game. Uh, but this guy is definitely going under with me. Yeah, yeah. You can certainly hurt him. Yeah, that's player. that's funny. So, but it's but not game breaking. It, but this is uh, usually more a thing that goes into your belly and into your feelings. So that's more <laughs> laughing about the table. So okay, you piss me off, bam, back into straight in your face. You are out of the game. I'm out of the game. Let's crown the others to kings. <laughs> Well, that's another point, is there is no player elimination in this game. Oh, definitely not, no. I mean, yeah, if I'm playing United States here and all of my pawns are killed off or or whatever... Yeah, by I'm nasty still in the game. Games. Yeah, I, I'm not out of the game, it just means that... Like, these you are don't just have worth, citizens. These are just worth victory points yeah. at the end of the game. And only citizens. You so, are sitting in your bunker and have you, the control over your yeah, exactly. uh, power still. You can think of it in the way of each player at the table controlling a, a nation is almost like their own government. So I'm not these people, I'm the government of these people. The leader of the nation, as I told exactly. you. Or the great dictator. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah um, is there anything you would, if you, if you were the designer, you would improve after you know the game? Uh, it's probably my biggest complaint about the game is that these tanks and the mushroom clouds are not part of the base game. Oh yeah, They're, it's, it's, it's Kickstarter exclusive can or yeah. you can buy it as an add -on. Yeah. I mean, otherwise you're just using tokens and the tokens are not that exciting. I mean, these really add a huge effect to the game. It doesn't, it might not seem like it at first, but they do. Yeah, it's funny to have those in your it's just Definitely. it's it's so much more so much more bang. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. He knows what I'm talking so, about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I I have another thing with the game. So for me, every time I'm open this rule book, fifteen pages of rule book for a game which you can easily teach in ten minutes. For me, you can streamline the rulebook. I know exactly the designer wants to put a little bit flavor text in that game. So you have one page, full page of designer notes. So it's a little bit more flavor text and he's talking about how much each pawn is uh, 8 million people or 60 million or whatever. So And he talks about the overpopulation and the thematically background of the game. but. For me, it could be a little bit more streamlined and more making this like uh, having a small column here with the base fact. So, bang, 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 that's what you can do. But this is the only thing. So, once you read the rulebook and understand the rulebook, or you have a good teacher, you don't care about the rulebook. But if I, if I were the creator, I would change that, definitely. I think the, in the rulebook, it can use more illustrated examples. I mean, I felt that when I was learning the game on my own, I felt like I needed more clarification with a couple of the points. But the illustration is from my... It's not the bad part from my perspective. No, what I mean is actually show yeah. a perfect example. Yeah. Like yeah, I, exactly. some rule books, I mean, some rule books that you see are really, really thick, but actually it's mostly because they have a few pages of examples that oh, are yeah, really definitely. detailed yes. and really drawn out and they go step by step through everything. 
I kind of would have liked that for a couple of points in the book here. I found that was a little bit lacking. Okay, so my next question. Is it fun? Would you play it again? <laughs> oh, of course, I love the game. Oh, I honestly, love on, honestly, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's one of my favorites because... This is your kind of game. <laughs> I, I, honestly, I wouldn't say it's my kind of game. Usually I hate this game, but it's so funny to play around with these mushroom clouds and... Um, Breaking coalitions and backstabbing and this smashing. Is he, this is how he plays the game. Boom, boom. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and uh, smashing someone into f the face. So that's yeah, that's really funny. Honestly, the first time I saw the box and un unboxed that game, I thought, oh, pff, a boring a negotiation game. I hate this usually because it's, <laughs> it's talking. Uh, it's it's much more acting than playing a game. It's not straightforward. Yeah. But no, this game. Because it's so fast to play, so easy to play. Just two actions, bam, and then if you're really pissing me off, then I nuke you back into the age. That's, that's, yeah, that's really funny for me. Yeah, with these kind of games, I'm not a huge fan of negotiation games myself. I haven't, I kind of steer away from them, but what I like about this game is, yeah, I mean, it's really thematic. Everybody can get into it. And you really, like all the times I play this game, people are really get into it and they really imagine themselves in the situation. So people are yelling and screaming yeah, at each other. Yeah, I'm, I'm usually trying to pull someone on my side of the team. So building I a team. I noticed that, yeah. I yeah, so that. building a team, uh, yeah, a strong coalition that holds from the first turn un until the last one between uh, Russia and the United States. What What is historically a good uh, coalition, I guess? So and yeah, exactly. they have to play against these useless Indians people. So pff, kill that Indians and the Chinese one. Why not? So. <laughs> We don't care about that. Yeah, it's it really you have to play with the right people. Yeah, of course, yeah, definitely. I, mean, I can see why these kind of games wouldn't go over well when you're playing with a certain group, but when you have everybody that really knows how to play it and is not afraid to get in and stab people in the back and really get in their face. Okay, for me uh, it's uh, I would say if you ask me would we like to play tomorrow, I would say always yes, I guess. So <laughs> I love that game as you, I guess, as you feel as well. So um, for me, it's a game that could hit the table every three, four months. If you're playing that with the right group, what is with you? Yeah, it's probably not going to be my first choice, just again, because I'm not a huge fan of the negotiation okay, game. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I wouldn't refuse a chance to play it. I mean, it's definitely something I would. You know, I want to get my revenge, but <laughs> yeah, it's it's a great game if you're playing with the right group of people, no problem. Definitely, yes. Okay, let's go over to the, yeah, let's call that points or whatever. So, um, I would definitely say if you play that with the right group and everybody has fun on the table, hit the table one week later. So for me, it's with the right group, highly recommended and if you not 100% sure if it fits in your group, then it's definitely a recommendation from me. Yeah, I would stay away from it if you know some people who are well, sore losers who take it personally. Oh, um, yes, yes. Thankfully, I don't know anybody like that, but yeah, I mean, I, w I would recommend it. If you like these kind of games, I'd recommend it. It's, uh, again, I'm not a huge fan of negotiation games, but yeah, it's, I think this, as far as they go, this is a great negotiation game to have. I mean, it's very thematic, you really get sucked into it. Um, that's what I like about it. De definitely one point I have to add on this, because you said it's very thematically. So, uh, this is very, very uh, um, popular at this time, because Dan Brown wrote, after this game, Dan Brown uh, wrote his Roman Inferno, which is Exactly oh, the same I didn't know that. Uh, theme. Yeah, the I book is always about overpopulating and depopulating the world. So, Dan Brown copycat uh, this game, I'm pretty sure, yes. <laughs> I don't know, there are some themes that really get people involved, and for some reason, apocalyptic depopulation of the earth, <laughs> that seems to draw people into it. I mean, I played this game when I was demoing it, there was younger people, people I wouldn't even expect would like this kind of game. And, I don't know, they found it interesting enough to sit down and play a game, so it must have appealed to them on some level. <laughs> Definitely a good one. 
Well, there you have it. There's tomorrow. Tomorrow. We're glad you enjoyed the video and feel free to subscribe and give us a like and we'll see you next time. Okay, bye bye. See you.